Hey everyone, Jake Clark over here at uh, CES 2018. I am in the booth with uh, Eduardo from uh, Form Labs, and we are talking about the Fuse One specifically. So, can you tell me a little bit, um, like, what your role within the Fuse One project has been? Yeah, so I lead the engineering team for the Fuse One. I've been working on the printer for three years now, and uh, helped build the first prototype, and you know, I've grown the team and been involved in all the engineering decisions along the way. Perfect. So what has been the like initial response from your side of things with the Fuse One? Has it been a lot of response? Um, you know, how does the reception from it being announced, you know, being one of the first SLS printers under, you know, really at the price point that it's at? Right. Yeah, we've had a really good response. You know, the, uh, the announcement came out in June last year. We did a digital factory event at MIT and uh, you know, we showed the printer off to the world there. It was a really good uh, chance to get some feedback on the project. Until then, it had been sort of a uh, you know, skunk works thing at Form Labs. And so it's been exciting to have the printer out there and start having conversations with potential users and find out what their use cases could be, looking at production use cases as well as prototyping. And like you said, just bringing SLS technology to a new price point opens up a lot of applications that really haven't been available in the past. And when you were doing a lot of that um, initial conversations with uh, with that show, did you were you able to go back and change some things that you're like, oh, we never thought of that, or you know, was there design changes or was there not from that kind of? So there's been a little bit, but I think you know mostly we knew what we wanted to create, and it's been more interesting to find out how people would respond to the machine. By the time we announced it, you know, we pretty much knew the capabilities and the goals and the specs and everything that we launched on our website uh, and you know, the video events and things. Um, so not a huge amount of change from that uh, feedback, but I think understanding is this something that people actually want and allowing people to reserve a machine for $1,000, that's really the vote that counts, right? Anybody can say, that's a cool machine, it looks good, it's interesting, but when they're actually paying money, that's when you know you have a real product. Definitely. Um, just got my notes here. So, you know, what made you guys look towards SLS, you know, from the SLA side of things? Yeah, so we think of SLS and SLA as being really complementary process, processes. Um, so with SLA, you can get really high definition, uh, you get really smooth parts, there's a really wide variety of materials that you can print with. We just announced like our Gray Pro and our durable materials here, or no, sorry, rigid material here at CES. Uh, so you can tune the properties in a lot of really interesting ways with SLA. Uh, in contrast with SLS, you end up with slightly less, um, you know, smooth or like dimensionally accurate parts, still pretty good. Um, but they're really strong, they're made out of nylon, and so they're great for end-use applications. We have a few parts over on the table that we might be able to take a look at, but, you know, like a bike pedal that one of our engineers designed and put on his bike. He's been riding it to and from the office for a year without any problems. Uh, and that's not something you can do with, a, with an SLA part really very easily. That's more for, uh, you know, more specific use cases. This is like general mechanical engineering use stuff. Definitely. Uh, so, you know, overall process of you know, with, with this SLA machine compared to like some of the ones that are out there on the market right now and like more of the um, industrial price point. Yeah. Um, you know, how does that process kind of differ between the two or, or is, it, is it similar? So the Fuse One is, you know, full on SLS machine. It's almost exactly the same as uh, what you're going to see from a really high end, uh, you know, traditional SLS printer. So it's the same uh, technology for lasers, laser scanning, uh, the same sort of bed smoothing technology with a roller. It's the exact same material that you put in a $250,000 machine, and it prints with the same mechanical properties and the same resolution uh, and the same feature sizes uh, as a, a high-end, uh, you know, more expensive traditional machine. Okay, and I think you, you answered my next question of strength yeah. properties compared to, the, to, to more of the other SLSs that are out there. Yeah. You know, what if somebody already has you know, one of those SLS machines? Um, what does that look like for the post-processing? Can they utilize the same stuff that they already have in-house, or do they have to go with the, you know, your guys' kind of post-processing equipment? Sure, so the post-processing equipment would work uh, just, just fine. There'd be no problems there. But, uh, you know, in most instances, it's, it's not great to mix different SLS materials together. And it can be a challenge to clean out the uh, more traditional post-processing equipment. We're doing some things with our own post-processing equipment to make that uh, an easier process. Um, so it would work, but I think that company would have to determine if that's the right use case for them because they would be adding in our material. The, the one big difference is that 
our machine has to print in pre-darkened materials, so like a gray or a black material, okay. to absorb the laser wavelength, which is different than a traditional oscillos printer. That's one of the big things we changed in order to reduce the cost of the machine. Um, so same mechanical properties and all that stuff, just a different color. But if you were to mix white powder and black powder together, it could cause problems for uh, you know either machine. So that might not be something people want to do, but we think that's a pretty small number of customers. We're much more excited about people who are going to be getting their first SLS printer who've never had a chance to make these parts in-house. And can you talk a little bit about like the recycling process? So there's a percentage that you have to have as virgin material, is that correct? That's right. So the recycling process, it's a little bit nuanced, but uh, basically what you do is when you finish a print, you have this uh, build chamber that's full of parts and loose support powder. You take that into your post-processing system, you dump it all out, you run all the uh, extra support material through a, a series of screens to separate out the larger chunks that you can't recycle. And then once you have all that, that's recycled material, and you mix that, you know, at, at worst a 50-50 ratio between used and new. So it's not that 50% of the material you print has to be thrown away. It's just that when you're printing with material, it has to be half used, half new. Uh, or you can print with all new. It's up to the user how they want to run that. Awesome. And so is there anything in 2018 that you can kind of hint at or discuss or something that you think is going to be really cool in 2018 uh, with the Fuse One? Yeah, you know, we're really focused on getting the Fuse One out the door. Right now, the machine is available for, like I said, a $1,000 reservation, and that gives a customer a spot in line to be able to buy a machine uh, when it comes out. And we'll be shipping and fulfilling those reservations throughout 2018. So yeah, we're just moving through the process of finishing design for manufacturability, um, you know, benchmarking all our reliability numbers to make sure that the experience you get on a Fuse 1 is just as good as what you get on a Form 2. And our team is just super excited to get this out in the world and see more people use the technology. Yeah, and it'll be awesome to see how they use it, like you mentioned. Um, and you, know, you got a couple different parts on the table here that we're gonna take a look at and see um, how this machine has been used in that regard. So sure. thank you for taking the time, and I hope yeah. you have a good rest of your CES show. Yeah. And uh, I hope that we can actually get one of these in our shop and actually um, dive into it and actually utilize it. So yeah. thanks again. Thank you. Uh, or a snap, do you have a free hand? Here, you got a free hand? <laughs> I like that. We'll do that.